What is going on guys? Welcome to the second part of the CCI or Commodity Channel Index tutorial mini-series within our Python Mathematics and Finance Indicators series. Where we left off, we were talking about what the CCI was. Now let's actually program this into Python. If you have those first like eight lines from the previous videos, uh, when we go to calculate, just copy and paste those in. Otherwise, you'll have to type with me. Also, if you don't have the sample data .text, uh, Check the link in the description, get that sample data, copy and paste that into a notepad file, and save it in the same directory as the script. With that, let's go on and continue. So first we want to import NumPy as NP. We want to import time. Uh, now sample data is going to be our first variable here, and that's going to be equal open, and the file we want to open, sample data.txt. So whatever you save that sample data as, that's what you would open. And we want to open that with the intention to read. And then we're going to go ahead and read that into memory. Split data equals sample data dot split by new line. Then finally, date um, close p open, or actually it's close uh, high p low p open p volume equals mp dot load text. What text do we want to load? That's going to be split data. The delimiter is a comma. And finally, unpack is going to equal true. So we can unpack it into the variables uh, like this. Now, uh, we're going to get in the actual coding. So everybody that had been copy and pasted waiting, here we go. Actually, I lied. We need one more thing. Uh, we want to get that moving average uh, function. So uh, go to, there's also the link in the description for the sample code. Uh, go to that link, go to the sample code real quick. Let me just drag it over here. So here's that page, right? Just scroll down to the moving average function and just do like a nice little copy and paste of that so we don't have to go through that. I do have a tutorial series on the calculation of that if anyone is interested. Now, um, the next thing uh, is going to be define CCI. Oops, CCI. And it's going to have the following parameters. We're going to just throw everything into it, even though we don't need um, the open price, but we'll just pass it anyway. So we're going to say D C H uh, L O V T F and S M F. So these are going to be, you know, through this variable is going to be date, close, high, low, open, volume, and then time frame. That's going to be the time frame of our CCI and then the SMA that we want to use when we do the uh, simple moving average. Now we're going to come down here and we're going to say tip prices. So that's going to be the typical prices array. So what we're going to end up doing before we calculate CCI is get all the numbers that we need and then we'll actually do the formula. So that's typical prices. Then we've got MD um, and that's going to be the mean deviation array. So MDAR equals MD array. And then finally, the CCI will be an empty array. So we will populate that, hopefully, eventually. So then we're going to do one of those typical while loops. And we're going to say x equals 0. And then while x is less than the length of pretty much anything, we'll just throw a random h in there. Um, and by anything, I mean anything uh, from here to here. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's that. So while x is less than the length of the highs, let's say, tp. Uh, so typical price is going to equal, and this is the calculation for typical price, it was h plus l uh, plus the close price divided by 3. But we also need to use the x variable, so we'll throw in the x's on the h, l, and c. So that's done. And then we're going to say tip prices dot append tp. And then finally x plus equals 1. So that'll run through and get us a typical prices array. Now what do we want to do? Well, we need that simple moving average of the typical prices. So I'm going to say SMATP, now that that typical prices array is completely filled. So SMATP, so that's a simple moving average TP. That's going to equal moving average, and then it always goes values uh, window. So tip prices, and then what window do we want to use? Well, we want to use SMA that we defined up here. And moving average is that function we just copy and pasted from uh, the uh, sample code. Now, the next thing we want to do is just for a little bit of a check, we'll print len smatp 
and then we're going to say tip prices now equals tip prices from the 19th part of that array on and that's because we perform um, an actual, well, it's because we're going to perform that simple moving average, but instead of doing that, um, one, we don't actually need it at all, but I'm going to say SMA minus one colon, um, because in, the, in theory, the 19th part of the array is really the 20th, or actually it's a list, sorry guys, I always call that that. Um, anyway, that'll be the more, uh, the, the more professional way to do this, so people really can change, because in my head, the SMA is going to be a 20, so... Um, that's why I did 19, but that'll make it dynamic, truly. Um, anyway, continuing on. Uh, after we do that, we want to print the len, oops, not in all caps, print len of tip prices. So that'll just hopefully line up and it'll be equal length. And in fact, we can go ahead and call this. So let's go ahead and call, uh, I think it was lowercase cci, right? No, it's an uppercase cci. CCI, params, and we ordered the params that way, so I can just do it really easily, like so. Copy, and it was time frame SMA, just for the record. So time frame, usually you do a CCI, like 14 is a pretty popular one, so 14, and then the SMA we're going to use is 20. So, uh, <laughs> print lang, print len. So let's go ahead and run this and just see uh, if we get proper uh, lengths. And sure enough, we do. They line up, and so that was the whole point of that. So we're ready to continue on with our code. Now, the next thing we want to do is run another while loop, and we want to do um, the whole uh, mean deviation. And to do the mean deviation, we're going to get the simple moving average of that line and then the current uh, typical price, and then that the deviation is what's the difference between the SMA of that and the actual current value. That's your deviation. So that's the next thing we want to do. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say Y equals time frame. And the reason we're doing that is because we have to start at the 14th point. Because it's not only mean deviation, it's like the sum of the mean deviation. So we have to start at the 14th point so we can actually look um, 14 points back, right? Or if we were using a different uh, CCI measurement, we would, you know, if we were using the CCI 20, it'd be 20 points back and so on. So we just have to do that. So now what we're going to do is while y is less than the length of whatever SMA TP is, we could also use tip prices, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say the consideration uh, typical prices equals tip prices from the y minus the time frame variable uh, to y, whatever that is. So that's the array that we're going to consider of typical prices. And then the consideration SMATP is going to be the exact same thing, y minus tf uh, colon y. So then we're going to basically sum up the differences of each part of that array, and then that would be your mean deviation for that single point. So now, um, once we've done this, we're going to say MDs equals zero, because we're going to make these mean deviations, right? Then we're going to get to Z equals zero, make another while loop. So while Z is less than the length of, uh, you could either use consideration TP or consideration SMATP. Well, it's less than the length of that. Cur, and at, let me, yeah, okay, I can just scroll down. Uh, cur MD, so current mean deviation equals the absolute value. Because uh, we're only we're not looking for negatives here. We're looking for how far. What is the difference? So that's always going to be a positive number. So consideration TP Z whatever Z element is at the moment minus consideration SMA TP uh, Z element. Then we're going to say MDS plus equals cur MD because we're looking for the sum of those mean deviations. Um, then we're going to say z plus equals 1. Once we're completed with that while loop there, we've got the sum, and now we need to append it to our md array, which I believe we did define already, did we? Yeah, it's right at the top here. So md array dot append mds. So now we've got an md array, and now if you recall, we're still within this y while loop, so now we've got the mean deviations and once we've completed, or once we've done the appendage there, we do y plus equals 1, so we can actually uh, finish out that array. 
Finally, when we're all done, let's print out the length of MD array and just see that uh, that's the proper length that we want. In theory, it should be the 14, you know, 14 points shorter than uh, the other two arrays. So in that case, what we want to do is say tip prices now equals tip prices uh, 14 colon, and then SMA, oops, SMATP equals SMATP 14 colon. Then we'll also print len uh, tip prices, and we'll also print len SMATP. So now the last three digits this thing spits out ought to be of the exact same length. So let's find out. And SM. Well, this is a bummer. We did get 87, 87, but now it's telling me consideration SMATP is not. Um, oh. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, consideration SMATP equals, why didn't anybody tell me this when I was doing this? SMATP, uh, interesting error there. Rain fort. Anyway, uh, so sure enough, 87 minus 14 equals 73, and then the last three numbers are indeed identical, so we're all set. So, And we can also, while we're thinking about it, we can comment out these. Uh, since we don't really need them anymore. Same thing here. There's no reason to be printing them out. We've confirmed our uh, question. So now, what do we need to do? Well, we actually have to perform the calculation, right? So we've got all the, the uh, numbers that we need to do this calculation. Now let's actually do the calculation. So now that we've exhausted, um, we've got x, y, and z exhausted. We're, we're going to loop back to using x again. But we're going to make it x, x equals 0. And we're going to say while wow, xx is less than the length of, and we could use really SMATP, tip prices, MD array, whatever you wanted. Uh, so I'm just going to throw in SMATP. Um, now, while well, that's less than the length of that, uh, we're going to say CCIs. So equals, so like whatever, you know, the CCI variables uh, are going to equal, not variables, uh, values, tip prices xx minus SMATP xx. And just in case, uh, let me bring back up our little tutorial slide for the calculation. So what we're doing right now is this calculation here, right? It is TP minus the SMA of TP for whatever time frame, which we've already calculated. So tip prices minus the SMATP, we've got that um, all set. Then we're going to divide that by point uh, 0, 1, 5 times the mean deviation, which we've also already calculated. So uh, it's going to be this divided by 0 0.015 times the MD arrays uh, XX value. So that'll give us CCIs. Finally, we're going to say CCI.append uh, CCIs. And let's just make sure by scrolling up to the top that that is what, yes, lowercase CCI MD array. Um, CCIs, and then XX plus equals 1, and now we are ready. Um, we're going to go ahead and let's print len CCI, and let's print len date 33 colon, and then also, well, since we're in theory done with this, we're going to return date uh, 33 colon, and CCI. 33 colon, uh, the reason why we're using that is our movements here is basically a 20 plus a 14. So what do we have there? 34. But the 34th true element in an array, or the, by, by counting, uh, starting at 1, would actually be the 33rd element, right? Because we start at 0. So we're using 33 uh, colon there. And actually, that's also the same thing with our other thing that we did. So really, it shouldn't be 33. We should program it as tf plus sma colon. So let's do that. tf plus sma. Wow, damn it. TF minus one. <laughs> I'm not sure we can get away with this, but I'm pretty sure this will work. Uh, minus one colon. Uh, yep. <laughs> let's uh, save that and run that, see if we can do that. Yay, we actually got away with that. Awesome. So 73, 73. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now we're actually ready to go ahead and chart this bad boy and, uh, and actually, before before I leave, let's go ahead and print CCI and make sure these numbers are 80% um, within the range of uh, 
negative 100 to 100. I think it, I think it's supposed to be like 70 to 80 percent of the value should be within that range. Um, let's see what um, these are not the numbers that we want. Um, we probably did the mean deviation wrong. Let's go look back at our mean deviation calculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so instead of depending, yeah, okay. So the mean deviation is what we did wrong, and that's why we're getting lower digits than we want. So the mean deviation uh, right now is this massive mean deviation, right? Because we added all the mean deviations. We're supposed to get the mean, or we added all of the deviations. We're supposed to get the mean deviation. So at the end of um, this, you, you would really need to do... Uh, TF. So we would need to say instead um, MD. Hmm, it's hard because I don't want to change all of our variables right now. But really, this MD would be this. But anyway, uh, I guess we. I don't think we've used the MD like pure MD. So I guess we'll do that. MD equals MDS divided by time frame. And then instead of appending MDS, we need to append MD. Save that, and let's rerun this, and hopefully now we have the correct digits. Um, yeah, this looks a lot better. Okay, so most of the digits are within the negative 100 to the 100 range. Obviously, there are some that are way out of that range, like 290. Uh, we've got 155, but for the most part, we, we, we don't. And this would be, obviously, overbought. 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 Still overbought. <laughs> right? Uh, where is our 290? Yeah. Way overbought. Run. Uh, that's what it's saying. Anyway, so now that that's better, good thing uh, I decided to go ahead and print it out before moving under the graph. Otherwise, we would have had to revisit the code. Um, anyway, so the code is now done. That's how we can calculate CCI within Python. And in the next video, what we're going to be doing is actually uh, putting it in our charting application and charting it in Python. So, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support and your subscriptions. And until next time.